04 and a half GMC Sierra. The half meaning that it has an LLY engine in it. And I'm replacing the block heater in it today. It's never worked on this truck yet. Never used it. Tried once, twice, but it didn't work. So after driving this truck for the last eight years, I think it's time to put this in. So the first thing you'll need to do is take out the inner fender. And I'm not even going to show anything about removing that. It's just a bunch of clips any anyway. And if you really wanted to have some room to get in there, you could take your tire off as well, which I'm not going to be doing. Just so you can see where I'm headed with this passenger side by the wheel and the block heater is right there. That's it right there. Hard to get a decent shot of it, but I'm going to try. My power cord is right there. I already took it from where it was hanging. And this power wire, it'll probably be attached with some random quick ties. Get those off. It's all right there. You should be able. To, you should be able to just pull the plug out if you can reach it. There we go. And you definitely want to replace that. So I'm using a nice big clean drain pan because I plan on reusing the antifreeze and a couple of spares because this thing holds a lot of antifreeze. If you're lucky your truck is going to have a drain plug for the rad. If not you'll have to remove the rad hose that's right beside it, the lower one. Also very important before you remove the lower rad hose or the drain plug just make sure you got no pressure in your system. Just take that off. I'm just going to leave it on loosely right now. Just so that when I take that plug out, it's not just going to go spraying everywhere. that didn't work out okay so I had my wheel turned the other way I thought I'd be able to reach into the back there a little bit better but yeah I couldn't get my pan in place where I wanted it so I spewed antifreeze all over my floor already nice eh That's going to pour for quite a while. While I'm taking this out, I'm not going to be able to give you much of a view because my arm's just going to be in the way. There's not a lot of room up in there. But what I'm using is a number four Allen head socket. And it looks like you could use a flat screwdriver there if you wanted to. So it didn't take much to loosen that up with a socket. So now I'm just going to use a short flat screwdriver to get in there and get the rest of that bolt out. So I've made a huge mess on the floor and I've got that pan almost full and a little bit started in the smaller pan. So this is why I kept three pans around. I've got the third one right there. So I'm going to catch whatever drains out of the block yet with that third pan. So I grabbed a bit of a longer screwdriver here. Don't 
don't seem to have an in-between size and you can unscrew that you should be able to feel it once it gets as far as it wants to go it's going to start getting tight and I got my pan underneath there hopefully this will pop right out nice it's probably been in there forever already alright I'm going to try and wiggle that loose with my channel locks What I ended up doing was I got right alongside of it and I just fired it out with that pry bar. So that thing is just sitting in there now and should be able to wiggle it out of there. Let's hope. Before I get too far. I just took my long pry bar and I got up in between the block and the block heater and I pried it downward. I had to flip this upside down first and then pried it downwards. And that's coming out upside down. And the reason why I was having such a hard time was because these two brackets here, these clamps, they didn't fold back in like they're supposed to. So hopefully the new one will go in a little easier. So I've got the hole nicely cleaned up there. I just used a little piece of this emery cloth. And in the instructions it recommends that you lube that seal. But it needs to be either soap, antifreeze, or silicone based grease do not use petroleum based grease it will uh, crack your o-ring prematurely and I've already uh, lubed this up with some liquid soap and then you want to make sure that that center screw is practically all the way out like that so that those little arms are folded in. So I know I can't give you a good shot of what I'm doing here but I'm gonna try and this time I'm gonna try and get it in there right side up because this according to the instructions faces 12 o'clock which is straight up. But you have to be able to work it around that piece of motor mount right there there it goes okay so I've got it sitting in there so you can see it's in there with the prongs facing upward and I'm going to tighten up that screw on this one and that one actually has a nut on the end like a bolt and I can get an 8 millimeter socket on that. So again, I don't think I can get a very good shot here, but I certainly am going to try. Alright, so now I'm starting to tighten that clamp on the other side. And I'm keeping a constant pressure on that and pushing it in as I'm turning this here because I don't want it just falling out before I get the clamp tight. It's very hard to do. Get one arm in there and that's it. Stay in there. Okay, it's starting to go in now. I'm 
gonna push that in as far as I can. Okay, now I just need to torque that. So I'm just gonna continue tightening this up with the small ratchet here. Not going to go very tight at all. And you should be able to watch it pulling itself in when you tighten this. And it says to torque this from 20 to 25 inch pounds. Very hard, very hard to get in here with the torque wrench. So to give you an idea of what 20 to 25 inch pounds looks like. It's just barely tight with a small ratchet is what 20 to 25 inch pounds is. So there it is all installed. Reinstall your drain plug or reattach your lower rad hose depending on whichever you had to do to drain it. So this is why I have three drain pans. They're not all full but I'm replacing the antifreeze with the old stuff because it has not been in there that long. Beware this is a messy job. And if you're reusing the fluid like I am I highly recommend a fine filter funnel. And on to the next thing you'll see a little plug on top of your thermostat housing there and in this particular vehicle that plug has to come out and you keep filling it until you see antifreeze coming out of this hole and plug it off once you see antifreeze coming out then you need know that the air bubbles are out of the system. Well, there's a good chance they will be anyway. It's just a little plug like that with the rubber on it. And I'm just going to start with the smallest one. There we go, more mess. Why are we losing fluid here already? The fluid was starting to come out of there already. Right now, after you get this in here, it would probably be a wise idea to make sure that the drain plug that you took out or the rad hose that you took off is not leaking. That crud that's in there came from probably fell off the truck so that's a good idea why you want to use a filter you don't want that in your antifreeze so I reached all the way to the top once already and I just let it drain you can hear the air bubbles just rolling inside the tank there so this is the last little bit of the used stuff that I have here pretty much so I'm gonna take it for a little test drive and get it up to operating temperature and see if it has any leaks So I've got this thing up to operating temperature right there in the corner and you see it says low coolant level right there. I'm going to check for leaks and check the coolant. Okay so there's no leaks up in there and very carefully open this. Yep, don't want 
once more. So I'm going to undo that plug right there again and just check to see if there's any fluid coming out. If there is, then that means there's no air bubbles in the block. And then you can fill that tank back up again and we should be good. So right now you can see that there's no fluid coming out of there. So I'm going to start filling up the tank and now we can make sure we get the air bubbles out. So you can see it's a little wet around that plug. You can tell that uh, the antifreeze had made it back to the top again. So now I'm just going to fill it until it gets up to the cold fill line, which is right here where this uh, seam is right there. So you can barely see it there, but we're up to the cold fill. And I'm going to start it up one more time and just see if it goes down or not. Okay, so the low coolant light is off. You can see the antifreeze there. It's just barely over that lip right there where the seam is. And it hasn't gone down any. It stayed pretty much full like it was. So. Cap can go back on securely. No leaks, and I'm gonna put the wire on. Okay, so I'm just gonna plug that wire in over there. So the wire is on there, facing downward like that. At least that's how this one is. And I'm just gonna get some zip ties and tie it in different places here, just to get it out of the way. Make sure it doesn't melt. Okay, so the wire is attached there by those blue zip ties. And there's one more place underneath where I've tied it to a hose. And I've got it coming out of the front right here. And when it's not in use, I'm just going to tuck it down in there like that. Just got to put the cover on it first. Sounds like bomber planes out there, doesn't it? I don't know what's going on. Wrapped around there, and ready for use. And one more thing left to do here yet. This back in. On the back side, there's some wires that have to be clipped into some of these holes here as well. I'm gonna finish putting all the push clips in there. So the cord is in place there. Truck is done. So there she sits, all by herself.